Here are the six key issues Trump and Biden will debate tonight. President Trump and Joe Biden will have their last major opportunity on Thursday to promote their record and criticize their opponent as they address questions on the coronavirus crisis, race, national security and more. President Trump's coronavirus diagnosis right after the first presidential debate in Cleveland did nothing to change his rhetoric about his handling of the pandemic. Credit, Ruth Fremson, The New York Times, Washington when they meet for their second and final debate on Thursday night. President Trump and Joseph R. Biden Jr. are expected to face questions over issues of deep consequence like the coronavirus climate change and national security. Their first debate did not lend itself to a particularly thoughtful discussion of policy. Given Mr. Trump's constant interruptions, this time, the candidates' microphones will be muted for portions of the debate. Here's a guide to where Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden stand on the six topics selected for Thursday's debate by the moderator. Kristen Welker of NBC News. Mr. Trump's coronavirus diagnosis in early October sent him to the hospital for three days but did nothing to change his rhetoric about his handling of the pandemic. The president has repeatedly claimed that his administration's response has been tremendous. And at rallies over the last several days, he has insisted that the country is rounding the corner even amid another surge of cases in many places. Since the beginning of the pandemic, Mr. Trump has downplayed the threat from the virus and has ignored advice from health officials. Refusing to wear a mask and holding gatherings with large crowds, his administration's failures to rapidly expand testing are also well documented. Seizing on Mr. Trump's mishandling of the pandemic, Mr. Biden has been eager to make a case for why the nation would be better off if he were in charge. That has been a central message of his campaign for many months and he has been quick to point to his plans for addressing the coronavirus crisis, which include improved testing, expanded production of personal protective equipment, safe vaccine development and the safe reopening of schools. He has emphasized the importance of following science, and he has modeled responsible behavior on the campaign trail, wearing a mask and refraining from holding crowded rallies. Mr. Biden has said that he hopes strive, Anthony S. Fauci, the nation's top infectious disease expert, will also serve in his administration. Mr. Trump on Monday attacked Drive, Fauci as a disaster. The debate will give Mr. Biden one more high-profile opportunity to drive up these contrasts, and to argue that Mr. Trump's mismanagement has inflicted great pain on countless American families while also causing needless economic ruin. Mr. Trump's biggest claim to helping American families is the tax cut he helped push through Congress in 2017. The president also brags about doubling the child tax credit. Though many low-income families do not receive the full benefit of the change because they make too little income to take advantage of it. One of Mr. Trump's most consistent campaign messages is that his trade policies have helped American families by preventing companies from offshoring American jobs and raising tariffs on goods from other countries that compete with American-made products. But his attempt to bring back jobs appears to have had limited success. And his trade war with China has hurt the United States more than it has helped. The president also talks often about protecting American families from violence, insisting that his anti-immigration policies which blocked asylum seekers and refugees have led to deportations of gang members and blocked dangerous criminals from entering the country. In recent weeks, he has seized on the sometimes violent protests against police brutality in American cities saying that his support of the police is protecting the suburbs and the way of life there for families. While it remains to be seen what topics come up in this segment, Mr. Biden has a number of policy plans he can draw on that are intended to help families, including his suite of Build Back Better economic plans. One plank in that set of plans focuses on caregiving, with proposals addressing care for small children older adults and people with disabilities. He can also point to proposals intended to help Americans of different ages. 
for young people. For example, he proposes to make public colleges tuition free for many students. For older people, he has a plan to bolster social security. And he has accused Mr. Trump of threatening the future of that program. In addition, Mr. Biden has vowed to roll back Mr. Trump's restrictive immigration policies. On day one, he says he will send legislation to Congress that would provide a path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants. Mr. Biden at the first presidential debate. His campaign has amounted to a month's long condemnation of Mr. Trump's leadership in words and deeds. At home and on the world stage. Credit. Ruth Framson, The New York Times. Mr. Trump repeatedly claims to have done more for African Americans than any president other than Abraham Lincoln. An assertion that most experts say is absurd on its face. To back it up, the president points to his support for long-term funding for historically black colleges and universities. And to his signing of the Bipartisan First Step Act, which made modest reforms in federal sentencing laws. But from the earliest days of his presidency, Mr. Trump has stoked racial divisions in the country. After clashes between white supremacists and counter-protesters at a rally in Charlottesville, VA, in 2017, he said that there were very fine people on both sides. He used vulgar language to deride African nations and said that Haitian immigrants all have AIDS. And he engaged in a lengthy culture war with African American football players over their kneeling during the national anthem. Recently, his response to protests about police violence has been to attack the protesters as anarchists and looters and to deny that systemic racism exists in police departments. And in the first debate, he refused to denounce the Proud Boys, a far-right extremist group, telling them to stand back and stand by. Since the death of George Floyd in police custody in May, Mr. Biden has emphasized the need to fight racial injustice, speaking about the issue in a strikingly different way than Mr. Trump does. This summer, Mr. Biden rolled out a plan to address economic racial disparities such as by increasing access to capital for minority-owned businesses. He has also called for changes in policing, including a ban on chokeholds. Since the very beginning of his campaign, Mr. Biden has been focused on denying a second term to a president whom he faults for encouraging hatred and division in the country. Mr. Biden points to Mr. Trump's comments after the white supremacist rally in Charlottesville as having motivated him to run for president. When Mr. Trump is asked about climate change, he invariably responds that he has ensured the United States has the cleanest air and cleanest water. That is not true. Air pollution is rising under the Trump administration, but it is also not the same as climate change caused by human activity like burning fossil fuels. Mr. 